Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and we gotta catch up on this week's episode of Blues Clues, because I don't know what in the hell this love and marriage Huntsville is supposed to be. I'm so damn pissed off. Let me, let me just, let's get into this. Before we do, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. I'm just irritated. Let me tell y'all, normally, I watch the episode, I think about the episode, I watch it again, and then I review it. I started watching this mother and about went off. I heard so many beeps and bloops and what the fuck is this? I'm a big grown ass woman. Why do I feel like I'm watching Blue's Clues or some shit? All I'm hearing is horns and beeps and all kinds. Of if y'all can't tell the story, don't tell the damn story. Let's just get into it. On the super thing, shout out to OBA, to Delessia Dismuke, to Yvette Greer, who is always here, Tiffany Iglesias, and Tanya Fuller. Thank y'all so much. Y'all, y'all make this worth it because this is some bullshit. So of course this episode picks up where we left off from last week, which is in the middle of this infidelity conference between Mel and Kiki. Why Kiki is out here talking all her damn cousin business is beyond me and why Mel is this interested is beyond me too, but let's just get into it. Kiki is telling a story about supposedly some ladies walked into a bar and supposedly saw Marceau and they supposedly went to a hotel and had a threesome. Girl, we don't care. And this is where all the damn bleeping starts. Whoever Kiki is talking about, clearly they don't have clearance to talk about. So they're bleeping out her name, her title, her job, and just every damn thing about her. She's telling the story about supposedly they believe this to be true because Kiki knows Bleep's boyfriend and Bleep's boyfriend claimed they broke up with Bleep because because they find out what Bleep did with Marcel and Mel is pretending to be, sh oh my God. And Kiki, well, you know, at this point, it was just too much. I was thinking about taking that to Tisha. Girl, I know you were. Y'all make me sick. Kiki said she just couldn't live with herself not telling Tisha this information. She couldn't see herself being around her and having conversations with her knowing she doesn't know. Girl, go to hell. Kiki said, so of course I invited her over, told her I have something I need to tell her. She was supposed to come by the next day. The next day came and went and she never came and went. So, you know. Well, I, I got a question. Was this before or after you robbed her medicine cabinets blind? And was this before or after you cursed her and her unborn child out in the middle of the street in front of her damn house? Was this before or after all that bullshit? Mel said, so you still ain't told her yet? Why, are you looking for an opportunity to? Kiki said, well, this is what happened. The guy said he actually sent Tisha a message because he wanted Tisha to know, but you know, Tisha never responded to him either. Mel said, girl, she don't wanna know. Or, here, here's an option. She knows, she knows everything you think she doesn't know. She just made a different choice than you did. Rather than choosing to be queen of the damned, she decided to say, I don't know shit about no infidelity. We ain't never experienced that. I don't know nothing about it till I get behind closed doors in my house. At this point, the question becomes, why are you so hell bent on making her admit that she knows? Because if she's experiencing infidelity, I don't care if don't nobody know, she still goes to bed with that pain at night. The problem is you wanted to be this trailblazer on the path that you're on and now you mad that you on this path alone. Kiki goes on telling the story to say that after she invited Tisha over and Tisha never came, after the guy reached out to Tisha and Tisha never responded, Tisha reached out to Kiki, knowing her mess ex cousin. She said, "Hey, did you call this man asking this man questions about me and Marceau?" Kiki said, "I ain't that ain't how it went. That's not how it went. Well, how it went then?" Kiki said Tisha told her that she felt like this whole thing was kind of shady, and Kiki responded to Tisha by saying, "You wanted me to fire my bleep." I believe she's saying her makeup artist. Mel says, "So hold on, let me make sure I understand. She came to you wanting you to fire your bleep." who's not accused of sleeping with her husband, but she wants to keep her bleep, who I believe is her makeup artist, who is accused of sleeping with her husband. That, that's what you're saying. Well, they bleeping so damn much that I don't know what nobody is saying, but whatever is being said and however the math adds up, the math ain't mathing as to why you in this business. I would think between all the ventures, the singing, the modeling, the skincare line, the hair care line, the churn care line, that you would be too damn busy to be knee deep in somebody else's 10 year old business. So Mel is asking Kiki, well, do you think she heard about all this before now? Kiki said, yeah, I do. Girl, hold, just, oh, this is 
too much for me. Girl, shut the hell up. You've been saying since season one that you know Tisha knows her husband has cheated on her. This is not news to you. You're not shocked. You're a bad actress trying to spill old tea. So Mel asked Kiki, well, did you fire your bleep, bleep, bleep? And she said no. And I think she felt like I was being disloyal to her because she felt like I didn't come tell her right away. But actually, I was being loyal to her and I was planning on telling her. Let me tell you something. When she gets to enunciating and pronouncing all of the syllables in the word, her S is lying. But she's telling Mel how she told Tisha that the whole thing is her fault because, you know, I prayed on it because I knew it was a sensitive subject and I invited you over to have a conversation about it but you didn't show up and that's on you, not me. So I didn't show up to this messy at surprise party that you had for me. And now it's my fault that you didn't get the spring on me face to face the bullshit that you thought you had on me that was going to hurt my feelings, girl. Please get you a one-way ticket to hell. Kiki is saying that Tisha said damn near that. Tisha said, well, you could have called me to tell me whatever it is you had to tell me. Mel said, no, some things you need to be face-to-face. -face. Yeah, because you want that first-hand reaction. You want that transfer of energy. You want to see this person hurt. That's why. Kiki said, exactly, I wanted to deliver this face to face. And she just kept going on about, well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? And I told her, this is why, because you don't listen. Mel had to buy one, get one free audacity to say, you know what, Kiki, sometimes people just don't want to know. They don't want to hear and they don't want to listen. And you have to let them stay where they at doing their thing. I said, well, your ass would know. Kiki said, I really had intentions to have her back. I don't like my cousin looking stupid. I don't like my cousin looking like a fool. No, unless you the one making her look like it. She said, the truth is I really want to team up with her and jump on his ass. You got too many problems of your own to be worried about what's going on in her house. Mel said, girl, y'all need to sit down and talk too damn late because y'all done did it. Kiki said, yeah, I wrote her and told her, yeah, we need to sit down and have a serious conversation because you blaming me for all this is not going to work. Mel said, here's what I'm saying. I'm just saying, I don't understand how she more mad that you got more smoke for you than the actual girl who's accused of sleeping with her husband. I said, I know you lying. The same way that you have more smoke for Tisha and exposing everything that has happened in her marriage than you ever had for Ariane. I'm dragging the body her edges through these internet streets. You negotiating with the bitch while you over here trying to take Tisha down. Girl, save this bullshit. Y'all, I hadn't even finished the scene before I went off. This heifer had the nerve to say, yeah, she sounds real challenging and remedial. I know your ass is lying. Girl, you went and tried to make friends with your husband's side chick. And then your husband's side chick hop skipped and jumped all over your ass all through this damn internet. And even as this woman told you, me, Tasha K, God, anybody else who would listen, how she done did everything under the damn sun with your husband, you still wanted him back. You were still willing to fight and argue and carry on and trying to prove to the world that he wanted you so, so remedial and challenged are words you might want to be careful using, dear. What I find to be challenging is how there is one life that's presented on social media and there's a totally different life that does not appear on this damn show. She's supposedly dating, singing, modeling, making skincare products, hair care products. We don't see none of that shit. All we see is you meeting with Tisha's family, talking about Tisha, talking about Tisha's marriage, calling Tisha remedial and challenging. Where are your friends? Where are your business ventures? Where is your life? Kiki said she's been holding back with Tisha, but she's at the point where she just wants Tisha to open her eyes because they're not going to be going through this much longer. If you would mind your damn business, if you would take your ass home or to one of your appointments, you wouldn't have to worry about what's going on in her house. And then she has the nerve to say in the confessional that Tisha chose to believe her gaslighting husband over her own flesh and blood. No, no, baby. This is the perfect example of blood ain't thicker than water. This is the perfect example of sometimes family will do your worse than strangers. Kiki said Tisha can't hide from her or the truth much longer. She just really can't take it. She doesn't know how much longer she can take this. Now, then I said all that bullshit for Mel to ask Kiki, do you think it's true that Marceau was with this other one? No, I don't really think it's true that he had that threesome and all that, then what the 
are you on this TV repeating that bullshit for? Mel said, well, what does Tisha say? Tisha always says where there's smoke, there's fire. And that's what she said pertaining to my marriage. Baby, you the one that showed us the smoke signals. What the f are you talking about? Mel said, as far as I'm concerned, from where I'm sitting, there's smoke and flames over there. Kiki said, and then Mel said, there's more? Didn't y'all write more on the call sheet? How many bullet points do y'all have to talk about Tisha in this scene? So they move on to the next subject, which is still Tisha. You know how lame, how embarrassed, how lackluster I would feel to be sitting on TV. And the only scenes I can produce are scenes with me discussing my ops girl. So Kiki brings up the hair care line that Tisha is producing based on her daughters. She said, well, did you know about Mel? So, you know, I knew about it because they had something at the expo about it. But yeah, that's how I knew. But go ahead, girl. Kiki said, I'm just confused as to whether she's partnering with Stormy or not. Because people were calling me saying that, yeah, she put out this line, but they're not sure if it's her, if it's Stormy, if it's her and Stormy together. Mel said, well, why do you think she's partnering with Stormy? Kiki said, because if you go on the website for Tisha's hair care products, her return policy is Stormy's return policy from Stormy's website, word for word, down to the contact email address being Stormy's canvas beauty address. Just, oh my God. Mel said, well, after the tension that I witnessed at that expo meeting, I wouldn't expect that they're doing anything together. Kiki said, well, yeah, she never mentioned anything to me about her going into business with Stormy either. Girl, according to you, she don't mention shit about her business to you. Why would that be shocking? Kiki said, all I know is if she's not under Stormy, then whoever edited that did a terrible job. And it's straight up plagiarism. Now, Kiki is full of shit, but it absolutely is plagiarism. But I honestly think she and Stormy are in some kind of cahoots. Now, in the confessional, Mel said Tisha has garnered a name of copy and paste for essentially copying things that people close to her do. She has a track record of doing things or producing businesses or ideas that are very similar to the ideas or businesses of people around her. Well, once again, you would know because Mel did the exact same thing with Stormy. When Stormy came on the scene, Stormy came on the scene promoting a hair care line. Mel had said she wanted a skincare line from the very beginning. All of a sudden, when Stormy came on the scene, Mel comes out of nowhere producing a children's hair care line that's named after one of her four children, which is a whole nother subject. She suddenly popped up with the same vehicle Stormy was driving. What I'm gonna need you to do is that finger you got pointing at people, I'm gonna need you to tuck that bitch back in. Of course, they showed a flashback clip of Mel saying that Tisha copies everything that she does because Tisha had a seminar and Tisha was talking about power couples. And she said at that time that everybody knew that she and Martel were the power couple of Huntsville. When she had her Embrace Beauty, Tisha produced some brand that had a logo that was very similar to her Embrace Beauty logo. And she felt like Tisha was just in her shadow trying to be her and do her. She said, so yeah, Tisha has stolen and copied plenty of ideas from her over the years. So I guess Stormy, now it's your turn. Well, Stormy must be the big dog because everybody's copying her, including you. So we move on. We see that Maurice is going to a custom car shop where he is getting work done on a Jeep that he recently bought for Kimmy. He said that's the vehicle she's been wanting. She's been asking for it for the last few years. He said he wanted something more luxurious for her like he was trying to talk her into a mind bog. I said, I, I know you lying. So of course, Marceau stops by in order to make this a scene. They're having a conversation about the Jeep. Marceau is really impressed with the Jeep. He is letting Maurice give this I am a great husband speech about I was trying to convince her to get a Maybach or a Lamborghini and she insisted on this Jeep. What kind of damn job do you have that you are getting a Lamborghini as a leisure car? Just sit your ass down. He said, but she insisted on this Jeep and you know, she just wants to let her hair blow in the wind. And you know, and I'm thinking to myself like, babe, you kind of don't have that much hair right now. This man is the lowest form of a man to me. He is this big as a man and that's probably his motherfucking problem. Even Marceau, who can be low as a damn 
earthworm put his head down and said, please don't say that dumb sh Don't say that shit. This Neanderthal said, you know, I just felt like now that her hair is starting to grow back, <laughs> this would be the perfect time to buy her that Jeep. What I would like for you to do is test drive that Jeep over the roughest terrain and drive yourself straight to hell. And of course, he sinks into the abyss that he always finds himself in of complaining about their sex life just ain't the same. How about she don't like you like that? Okay, how about she just wanted a man and she took your ass in because she needed you to complete her image. And then when she got you in that damn house, she found out you wasn't shit. She found out she done picked up some other woman's problems. You don't put it down like that and she don't feel like being bothered. Since you can tell the truth about her damn hair, we can tell the truth about your lack of performance. So if Maurice is starting his complaining to Marceau about how their sex life just isn't the same, Marceau said, why the hell are you telling me this shit? Marceau said in the confessional, me and Maurice ain't talked about our sex lives since we were 12 when we were lying about our sex lives. So why, why is he telling me this? He said, now if I wasn't getting none at home, that would be my little damn secret. I wouldn't be telling nobody this shit. Well, Marceau tried to help him any damn way since you come into your little brother with this shit. He said, well... What was the change in frequency? Y'all went from what to what? Mari said, well, we went from three, four times a week to once, maybe twice a month. Marceau said, like, most married people? Y'all got to start marrying people y'all like. Mari said, 24 times a year? Like, that that's not right. Marceau said, you getting it twice every month? Oh, bitch, you getting plenty. And you know what it is, is Marceau is basically saying, this is how stupid you sound. You coming to me with this dumb shit about your sick wife, bitch. What you want me to say? Maurice goes on to give him his think piece about how he really believes that Kimmy's lack of libido is all in her mind. To hell with the life-threatening disease she's dealing with. Marceau looked at Maurice standing there wearing a back brace, but he hurt himself lifting weights. He said, Maurice, let, let me, let me use your logic on you. He said, what if I looked at you standing here wearing this back brace, knowing that you've hurt your back and say, no man, pain starts in the mind. Thank you, Marceau. Talk to this mother and stupid. Marceau said that woman knows her body and she knew her body long before you ever got with her body. He said, now imagine I told you, take that back brace off Bend over, touch your toes, do some jumping jacks. You shouldn't have no pain because the pain in your mind. This jackass decides he's going to prove a point. Well, I'm going to take the back brace off and, and I, I, I'll touch my toes and I'll do some jumping jacks if it'll get me some ass. If you had a brain and some compassion, that could get you some ass. Maurice said in the confessional that Marceau's advice is definitely helpful because most people don't have a perspective other than their own until someone shows them a different perspective. And now he realizes how good he had it. Emphasis on had. I, I just can't with him. Who wants to be married to a person to whom you are only a living recreational doll. Them having sex is not even a real exchange of energy. It's not a real interaction of spouses. It's not a real expression of love. It's literally him using her body to get off. Who wants that? So of course, Mari takes this opportunity to announce to Marso and us that he's gonna have a cookout to present this Jeep to Kimmy and he's gonna invite the whole crew so they can tear up his damn yard. Of course, Maurice lets Marceau know that he's inviting everybody to include Stormy and Courtney. So I hope you done got over whatever issues you got with them. Marceau said, I ain't got no damn issues with them. I took their feedback and that's that. They ain't my friends. They ain't never been my friends. They ain't never gonna be my friends. I done made it 43 years without them being my friends and I think I can make it 43 more. He said, going forward, I plan to treat them like I treated them last year, like I didn't know them. He said, sometimes it comes down to we just don't mix. We might be oil and water and that's just that. So we move on to Stormy and Courtney's house. Stormy's at home sick or recovering from being sick. Courtney is making her tea and taking care of her. She apparently had strep throat that went untreated, became toxic shock syndrome. Everybody been on the edge of being dead. Ch I don't know. So we watched them have a whole conversation about her needing to take antibiotics and drink water. Ch I don't give a damn. Where is Carlos? 
Where is Car if Carlos don't get his ass down from the YouTube and come do something with this damn show? Did you just quit? Like, what's going on? So, of course, they use this conversation to segue into Kiki about Kiki was the first person to call and check on Stormy. Yeah, girl, she probably thought she had a prescription. So, she and Courtney are talking about how much they just like Kiki and they really think she's a cool person. And then they go right into laughing at her ass being on Crime Stoppers. So, while Stormy is sitting there selling this bullshit about, yeah, you know, Kiki is cool. I like her. Courtney said, yeah, you called her dark wing duck though. Stormy Lioness. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Ma'am, ma'am, you did it on a TV show in front of cameras and the people rolled the tape back. B girl, what? They showed this girl in the confessional falling out laughing about how Kiki looked like dark wing duck to her in that damn surveillance footage. So of course the conversation about Kiki segues into how we know Kiki, Tisha. Stormy said Tisha texted her, but she didn't text Tisha back. And she goes into telling Courtney that, yeah, you don't know this, but uh, Tisha started a hair care line for her daughters. She copied and pasted Canvas Beauty shipping policy to her website. To the degree that she left our web address as the contact address for the orders. Just Lord. She said it made its way to social media. People were running with all these narratives. And it sounds to me like they were not in cahoots. It sounds to me like Stormy was not aware that Tisha was going to copy and paste this policy. Now, if this girl told you, yeah, just go ahead and copy and paste my policy and you just didn't do your due diligence. That's one thing. But if you just decided, you know what, I'm going to start a hair care line and I'm going to just copy her stuff. You need your ass whooped. I would say you bordering on a whole lot of infringements, but you done crossed the damn line. Stormy said, on one hand, I'm actually embarrassed for her. But on the other hand, I'd be more embarrassed if I were her. And my husband was running around saying stuff like, I don't want to take advice from Stormy. I don't care what Stormy got to say. When you are running around copying my shipping policy from my website, word for word. Stormy said in the confessional, she does want to have a conversation with Tisha about it, not from the vantage point of being upset about it, but from the perspective of how the hell did this happen? She said Tisha is not the first person to copy things from her website. She probably won't be the last. She said it's unfortunate, but she's used to it at this point. So she just gonna try to help the girl. So Stormy brings up that Maurice is having a cookout to celebrate that Kimmy is done with her treatments. And of course they are invited. Courtney said, yeah, that's real nice, but I ain't going. So we watched them go back and forth about why he don't want to go. He said, basically, it comes down to Marcel. Marcel done fit up for everybody. He said Marcel pushed a bunch of his buttons at that town hall meeting, but he just kept it cool. So Stormy is sitting there, but I'm, I'm about to cry. Please, please don't make me go by myself. Girl, if you don't sit your ass down. Courtney told her, I love you. You'll be all right. Go ahead on about your business. And she, I mean, go ahead. And she in the confessional, but he's throwing me to the wolves. Baby, you went to them same wolves and told them to get active. What are you scared of now? And of course, the only way she knows to convince her husband is to try to manipulate him with some bullshit. I'm about, well, what if Marso attacks me? He said he ain't gonna attack you because he's stupid. So we move on to Tisha and Marso meeting at their construction site, not their house, but their offices because they got all kinds of projects going on. This is the site where they're apparently building Scott Realty and some barbershop that they were working on. They're finally making some sort of progress with the actual build and meeting with designers and all this stuff. They're talking about the material and budgets and they got to keep everything separate for this barbershop that apparently they beefing with somebody about on the internet. But Tisha says she don't give a damn about none of that. All she knows is she's happy that this is finally happening. So Marceau brings up to Tisha that Maurice is having this cookout for Kimmy and she said, yeah, I saw the text. He said, yeah, and he's questioning me about whether I'm going to get along with everybody. I think he was trying to make sure that I'm good with Stormy and Courtney, but hell, you have to be friends to fall out in the first place. Marceau said, well, he's glad they have in this conversation because it's been a day full of bullshit. He said in addition to this bullshit, he had to deal with the bullshit at the city where somebody is calling down to the city of Huntsville and telling them that he got some Harlem Knights operation going where he has illegal gambling going on in his after hours business. Kiki, you down there playing on them people damn phone? Marceau said he doesn't want his business reputation to be at all associated with any kind of illegal activity, investigating for illegal activity. It might be some illegal activity. He don't want that shit on his name. 
Tisha said, you know, it's really sad that you have people who will pull those kinds of stunts like calling the city when all you're trying to do is run a business that betters and benefits the community. Marso said at this point, he wants to just cancel this bet on black event that they have coming up and move differently. Now, personally, I wouldn't cancel. Sh I would take my ass right on down to the city and talk to whoever I need to talk to about whatever licenses and permits I need to run my damn business. What do I need to operate my business legally at this particular event on this particular date? Marceau said it's just difficult when you have this vocal minority talking so much shit. And I said, well, welcome to the comment section. I understand. Tisha said, well, you know, it's always something because I know you heard about Macy and Mila's site having Canvas Beauty's information on it. He said, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. She blamed it on the web designer. She said, I contacted the web designer immediately and I asked him, what is this? Marceau is trying to help her save face. He said, well, isn't that the same designer that designed her website? Well, that, that's not what Stormy said. Tisha said, I don't know if he designed her site or not. I know he's in that industry and that's why I went to him and I know I paid him a lot of money to have me out here looking stupid. Marceau said, yeah, I mean, well, it's probably a template and that's something we should have caught. Well, you write on one account, that's something y'all should have caught, but that ain't no damn template, that's theft. With a template, you would at least have blank spaces to fill in your own information. This was copy and paste. I just, Marcel said, well, he fixed it, right? She said, yeah, he fixed it instantly, but still. He said, well, mistakes happen. I mean, and it's just like bet on black. He said, people are not going to just accept it at surface value. They're not going to say, oh, that looks like a nice event. Oh, that looks like a nice product. He said, no, they're going to go combing through it, trying to find anything wrong that they can find. Well, having said that, I would think that if you're going into business knowing that, that you would go in with a scrutinous eye, you would cross all your T's and dot all your I's. And even more especially, if you know you are copying shit. Tisha says she's just tired. She tired of every damn thing. Marceau said, well, the truth is it probably wasn't even a customer or supporter that caught that. It was a hater. She said it was absolutely a hater. Now, yes, yes, it was a hater that was combing through your shit to see if they could find some shit on you. But we also have to take accountability for it was my error. It was my error that they caught. They caught me copying something directly from somebody else's site. That's what you're upset about because you cannot be this mad that you started a hair product line, that you had a return policy that was on your website that clearly had another company's web address. You cannot be that mad at the public. Now, if you want to tell the web designer he owe you a couple dollars for pain and suffering, that, that's between y'all. But you cannot think the whole world is hating on you because this glaring error is on this website. Tisha starts to get teary-eyed and she starts to break down and say she does not understand why she gets so much hate, so much backlash from people. She said, you know, I don't talk about people. I don't try to start stuff with people. I don't bother nobody. So I don't understand why I get so much heat. Tisha it's because male don't like you. I'ma just tell the truth. From the very beginning, she was branded as male's project and male's puppet. And when that fell apart, she became male's arch nemesis. And after she was named male's arch nemesis, she came under extreme scrutiny and callous disregard. Nobody cared anything about Tisha, Tisha's feelings, Tisha's marriage, Tisha as a woman, other than admit that your husband been cheating on you. That has been the whole crux of this entire series for the past five seasons. So while I call Tisha for her bullshit, I see when Tisha is on her bullshit. The truth of the matter is people don't like Tisha as a byproduct of supporting male. Tisha is in the confessional explaining that people don't know her web designer. They know her. So when these mistakes happen, people are coming at her. They're not coming for the web designer. Well, what that's called is responsibility versus accountability. When you are the boss, the leader, the CEO, the owner, even when you are not responsible for something, you are accountable for it. So even though the web designer is who made that mistake, that person is who is responsible for it. As the leader of this entire ship, you don't get to pass off the accountability because I am the last stop. The buck stops here. So though this designer is responsible for that error, I am accountable for not catching it and for allowing that to be a representation of my business. And no, it doesn't feel good. It never feels good to have to be accountable for some shit you didn't do. But that's what comes with it. That's the cost for being the boss. 
Tisha said in the confessional, listen, it was a mistake. And I feel like people just look for a reason to have an issue with me. They do. Yes, people are going to be looking for a reason to have an issue with you, especially when you are the nemesis of their fave that they are trauma bonded to. They wanna have a reason to hate you, baby. Give them a reason to show up to work. It's up to you to put your best foot forward and step every time. Tisha said, it's just a lot. And she said, as strong as I believe I am, she said, I believe myself to be a strong person. I get tired. She said, you get tired of people trying to interfere with your marriage, trying to interfere with your business, trying to interfere with you as a person. I'm just tired. When you get that tired, that's the point at which you let go of all the dams you had to give. Let me tell you something. Sometimes people are committed to disliking you. When people just don't want to like you, they're going to find a reason to not like you. You could go out of your way to check every box on every list they got that would make you likable and they gonna make up a whole new one to see if you can jump through them hoops because they're committed to not liking you. Well, they wrapped this scene up with Marcel telling Tisha, listen, you helped me stay encouraged through my moment, whatever moment that was. And so I'm trying to help you stay encouraged through yours. Tisha said, well, I'm just glad that we have each other and that we're a team. Well, we move on to the cookout. Kimmy and Maurice are at home setting up and the first to arrive is Stormy. She is dropped off by her husband who is dead serious. He said, I ain't coming to niche. All right, you have a good time. I'll see you when you get out. Well, she goes in and Kimmy and Maurice are saying how happy they are to see her. And where's Courtney? She said he left. He, he ain't coming. So they're all in shock. Like, what do, you, what do you mean? Is he that upset with Marcel? Stormy said, Courtney just said he ain't coming because he ain't really feeling Marcel like that. And he don't want this to be something it don't have to be. Kimmy said, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, we left everything at the meeting, di didn't we? Stormy just looking around. Kimmy said, so what is he done doing stuff with us? Well, he quit the damn show. He ain't never coming back. Stormy said, well, he did say he wants some barbecue. He told me to bring him a plate. They said, hell no, it don't work like that. He don't get to not come, tell us, kiss his ass, and then send him a plate our food. So Maurice is still trying to clear the air with Stormy and he said, well, I talked to Marcel and Marcel told me he don't really have a problem. Stormy said, I don't really give a damn about him not having a problem. I don't care to talk about my husband when my husband isn't here. Maurice said, well, that's, that's my point. Can you get him back here? Stormy said, no, actually, I'm done talking about it. Maurice said, so you, you done talking about it? Why? She said, because my husband ain't here. And just then, Mel walks in. She making all kind of noise. Like, ooh, this my kind of living. I'm so excited. Girl, sit down. She's followed by Nell and Chris. They come in. He got the deck of cards while we about to play some spades or something. Y'all will be fighting in just a minute. Just then, Tisha and Marceau come in. They getting the spades table set up. They breaking down all the ones. So Tisha comes in hugging everybody and I said, yeah, girl, we in here recreating y'all's casino night. I said, oh, did you call the city? And then Martel comes in and thank God he found his way to the men's department. He got on a shirt that fits. Won't God do it? So Martel comes in. He's greeting everybody. You got Chris and Nail and Stormy and Mel sitting at the table getting ready to play cards. Well, Martel walks up and he hugs Chris. He hugs Nail. They all speak. He hugs Mel and she's looking at the table like, if this bitch don't get his hands off me. He hugs Stormy and she spoke. And I, I, I'm trying to figure out what, what's the beef today. Well, Tisha and Marceau ain't no damn help. They must have saw the tension and said, well, let's stir the pot. Tisha said, hey, Martel, you remember when you got your ass whooped on that spades table? He said, when was that, about 10 years ago? Marceau said, I think that was in Gatlinburg. Remember, we was all out there together and Mel was cursing his ass out? I said, yeah, y'all started shit. Nell said in the confessional that, you know, Martel walked up and Mel just didn't want to speak to him. She said, now... Me and Chris have been separated before. No, we ain't never went as far as getting divorced, but we were separated. And I'm sure there were plenty of times that I was not speaking to his ass. Chris said, I get it, but divorce can be complicated. For me, I think that's the issue is y'all have come to the resolution that there is no resolution other than dissolution of this marriage. Y'all ain't separated. Y'all have divorced. Everybody is moving on with their lives. They should be co-parenting, but we know that they're failing at that. But it's almost like there is a commitment to staying mad. Something I learned a long time ago is it takes too much energy to stay mad. When you have to remind yourself to be mad with that mother, I got to remind myself, I don't like you. Yeah, you did me dirty 15 years and 92 days ago, bitch, I forgot. It takes too much energy. It weighs on you too much. If, if he ain't shit, he cannot be shit, but my light is still gonna shine at full beam. He can go to hell. Now, just as Marceau and Tisha are getting their kiki on about, yeah, Martel, huh? remember when you got your ass whooped at that Spain table, Mel was cursing you out and all kind of shit. Karma came walking in. Here come Kiki and her damn husband. So Kiki and her husband come in. They hug Kimmy. They're greeting Kimmy. And Stormy is at the table asking Tisha, are you and Kiki good? 
Tisha said, I'm good with everybody. Tisha said in the confessional, I don't know what Kiki's issue is that she has this obsession with my marriage, but I thought I made it crystal clear when we went to that kickboxing class that she was keeping me, my name, and my marriage out her damn mouth. I forgot all about that damn scene, but they damn sure did get together and was supposed to be this kumbaya of cousins and they weren't going to do this anymore and I'm not going to talk about your marriage. We need to be the best of cousins on scene and now here we are. So they all at the card table. Kiki and her husband come up. They hugging people and Kiki gets to Tisha and tries to hug Tisha. Tisha slid up under it like a ninja turtle. I said, what the hell is that? She got up and slid right under that damn lady. Excuse me, y'all. I said, what the don't touch me hell is going on in here? Kiki said, oh, girl, you're so stupid. Just ignorant. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I understand why Kiki was mad because that was... I'd have been so damn embarrassed if somebody did that shit to me. Kiki said in the confessional, why do I continue to give this relationship a chance? This is so unnecessary because without this relationship, you wouldn't be standing here in the scene. That's that's why. So Kiki looks at Stormy and I, you didn't just see that shade. Tisha comes and sits down back at the table. Kiki takes her seat, turns to Stormy and I'll tell you what happened. And she starts recounting the same story she was telling to Mel, she starts telling Stormy, so you know about the whole situation on bleepity bleepity bleep. And Stormy is looking at her like, girl, what the fuck is going on? Stormy said in the confessional, I didn't know what the hell was going on. All I know is I saw this quick move between Tisha and Kiki. Next thing I know, Kiki is heated and sitting down telling me all this girl damn business. Kiki is going in about, it's funny how I always get blamed for stuff and she don't ever want to blame the people who should be blamed and I don't blame her for half the stuff I should blame her for. Girl, go back to fourth grade and get out of our face. So while Kiki's sitting at the table trying to tell all Tisha business, Tisha laughing, Kiki and calling Chris and Maurice, but this ain't the right deck of cards. Stormy don't know where to look and Kiki, are you listening to me? You listening to me? I'm trying to tell you this story. So she's telling Stormy about how so-and-so was supposedly having having an affair with Marso. Tisha was telling me that it was my so-and-so who was spreading the story. It's just girl. So they trying to play the card game. Marso is asking Stormy, you got a two of diamonds, a two of hearts. Kiki is so upset that she is not getting undivided attention that she said, you know what? I know what I'm gonna do. She literally snatches the cards out of Stormy's hands and starts throwing them across the table at Marso and Tisha. That was gonna be the first and last red flag. When I tell you how to come across that table and brought an ass whooping with me, she said in the confessional, yeah, they talking over me to try to have this card game, but how about this? There's no card game that's gonna happen. If I'm talking, shut up and listen, you are a fucking toddler. Tisha steady ignoring her. Tisha started yelling, we need another deck of cards. This bitch over here losing her shit. Stormy said, is there a table where y'all can go talk? Leave me alone. Kiki said, no, we don't need to talk. Then why are you sitting here telling this lady this bullshit? Stormy said, well, could y'all at least go off to the side to acknowledge the conversation? Because it does seem like there's a conversation that needs to be had. Kiki said, but she don't need to have the conversation with me. She need to have it with him. But here you are. So she's trying to get this story out as fast as she can about the man called her on three-way with somebody and she was asking the man what's going on and Tisha want her to fire her so-and-so and she's not firing her so-and-so without her knowing what's going on. Why? Girl, just, I can't. You know what Tisha really exemplifies in this moment that I'm trying to work on is the principle of not arguing with a fool because from afar, nobody can tell who the real fool is. I know God's still working on me because I have got sucked all the way in. Tisha and Marcel steady pretending the lady ain't there. Stormy is looking around like, where in the twilight zone hell am I? So Kiki steady having this damn argument with herself about I tried to tell her what was going on. I called her to come over and she didn't show up. Her, her, she didn't show up. Clearly your meds didn't show up either because you was off your rocker. So what, I'm supposed to run behind her to tell her this information? Girl, please get the hell out of here with that bull crap. Ain't nobody about to run behind your ass to tell you information. So if you mad, be mad. You're mad as in nuts. She's steady going on about be mad, get glass, scratch your ass, I don't give up, and slaps a drink in Tisha's face. God. Our next family reunion would have been at the police precinct because I was going to whoop her ass. Lord help me 
because you know your child. When I tell you I'd have been on the front page of the dollar paper because of the whoop her ass. I know we ain't supposed to condone violence and, and the, the politically correct thing to say is that I don't condone violence and it's not okay. And we need to practice conflict resolution. The only conflict resolution that would have happened is I was going to put foot to her motherfucking ass. Tisha was in utter shock. Tisha said, why would you do that? Kiki said, yeah, ignore that. Tisha said, you're stupid ass. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm glad you do. Tisha is literally pretending that this bitch is not there. And the only thing you know how to do to get her to acknowledge you is to throw a drink in her face. Marceau is talking to production of this show. He said, this is what we not gonna do. Tisha says, so this is what we on now. She said, yeah, that's exactly what we doing. Tisha better than me because Tisha kept her cool the entire time. Tisha said, I'm about to go in the house. And as she's walking in, she runs into Kimmy. Marceau is telling Kimmy, hey, hey, this girl just threw a whole drink in my wife's face. Either she got to go or we got to go. Kiki over there by Ann. And that's why they don't invite your ass to shit. This is exactly why they were warning the hosts about bringing your ass to the house. I don't think it has anything to do with addiction or issues. It has to do with your attitude and personality. That you have absolutely no self-control. You have no upbringing. You have no manners. You have no cooth. You don't know how to act. Marceau said y'all need to call the police and drug test her ass. Absolutely, because this is giving very much holiday. I got the bike. This is giving very much Wanda from Holiday Heart. Now, that's all jokes aside. So as soon as Marceau mentions calling the police, Kiki and her beanbag of a damn husband, now they want to fight. Do it, bitch. Do it, bitch. Oh, I was going to be calling 911 expeditiously, bitch. When I tell you she'd have been on the fast track to jail and the episode comes to an end with Kimmy trying to keep Marceau and Kiki's husbands apart. They had to get the fuck out my house. Kiki is a low-class, low-budget buzzard who happens to have an addiction. The addiction is not why she behaves the way she behaves. This is her character. This is her personality. This is who she is. This is her moral code and compass. I, I, I got to go relax my nerves. I need a drink or something. I just They, they got me. My own family better not talk to me loud right now. So it looks like next week they're going to be having some roundtable discussion about do y'all think Kiki still has an issue? Which, what does the evidence say? Stormy is sitting up there but no, I think she's clean. She's in recovery. Marcel said, man, look, cut shit. All right, cut shit. He said, have you ever seen anybody on drugs? Now Stormy getting ready to tell all her damn friend business about, yeah, my best friend who used to live with me and she used to watch my son and she doesn't live with us anymore. And then she broke down in tears. It's about to be a mess. Then we see that Courtney is going to meet with Martel and Chris about getting to the bottom of this issue with Marceau. And once again, we see Mel going to meet with Kiki and they're going to be bonding over how Kiki threw this drink in Tisha's face. This is some low class bullshit. But that's it. That's all. And I ain't got no damn more. Thank you so very much for coming down here, listening to me and letting me get this off my chest because I'll be damned. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And in the meantime, until next time, just like every time, I, I love you and I mean that and all that shit. I, I, bye.